Hey everyone, and welcome to What If Disney World. I'm Stevie. And I'm Amy. Today we've compiled some money-saving tips to help curb the cost of your next Disney World vacation. It's no secret Disney trips can be expensive, but with these money-saving tips, hopefully we can ease the burden on your budget. And just a reminder to support the channel by hitting like and subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. So, Amy, let's dive into some of our top cost-cutting strategies. Okay, so first we will talk about tips to save money on your stay. You can choose to stay at a value resort. If you don't know, there are three tiers of resorts at Disney, value, moderate, and deluxe with increasing prices. The value resorts are really fairly reasonable and they still give you that early entry perk and that is worth staying on property for. Our favorite value resorts are Pop Century and Art of Animation because they're reasonably priced and they're on the Skyliner so there's that ease of transportation. There's also Fort Wilderness which is a campground so if you have an RV that's a very economical way to travel. That's actually what we did as a kid when we traveled to Disney World. But if you have your heart set on staying at a deluxe resort, try renting Disney Vacation Club points or DVC points. DVC Rental Store and David's Rental are reputable businesses that allow you to rent DVC members points, and this can save you thousands depending on how long and where you're staying. Also, be sure to keep an eye out for Disney deals. Disney runs seasonal discounts that are often significant, like up to 10 or 25% off of room prices, which can save a lot. And even if you've already booked your room, you can call and they can go back and retroactively activate that discount for you. If you're able, you can also go in off seasons like January or September. The rooms are oftentimes cheaper during these times. And similarly, Fridays and Saturday nights are always going to be more expensive. So if you're able to time your trip where you're staying predominantly Sundays through Thursday nights, that's going to be cheaper for you. All right, so the second category is tips to save money on food. So all quick service restaurants offer free water. You can get it in a cup or you can use the refillable water stations to refill a water bottle that you bring. We have also found that at many places we're able to share meals like Flame Tree Barbecue has huge portions and we can split a meal there. Casey's hot dogs are enormous and we can split one of those as well, especially if you've been snacking all day. It's a really good idea to just split a meal and that can save you some money too through the week. They have popcorn buckets you can buy. If you're a big popcorn eater or your family's going to want to eat that through the trip, you buy a popcorn bucket at the beginning of the trip and you can refill it for $2 through the remainder of your trip and you can even bring it back to your next trip and use it again as well. Another tip to save on food is that we tend to eat a quick breakfast in the room. We get groceries delivered to our hotel or we just bring them with us in our car and we can have a quick breakfast in the room without having to pay a lot of money for it. Another tip would be that some character meals are cheaper at breakfast. So say you really have your heart set on eating at Chef Mickey's or Cinderella Royal Table or Tusker House. You can have the same character interaction and experience at breakfast, but it's going to be significantly cheaper than if you ate at that same restaurant during lunch or dinner. And also something to look into and research is that some table service restaurants are more reasonably priced. For example, Sebastian's Bistro at Caribbean Beach Resort is significantly cheaper than Ohana and still very good and has a similar sort of all-you-can-eat menu. But Sebastian's Bistro is $29 per adult versus $55 at Ohana. That's a really significant savings. I would also recommend that if you're not a big eater, consider skipping the buffets. 
especially if your kids are not big eaters, because if you go to a prefixed menu restaurant or a buffet, you're going to have to pay for everybody in your party. And if all your kid eats is one chicken nugget, you're still going to have to pay the full price for it and can't split meals. Um, We experienced this at our Animal Kingdom Lodge stay, we ate at Boma and Jico, and we were really shocked that our meal at Boma was actually more expensive. But that was because we were able to split meals at Jico, whereas we were not able to do that at Boma. All right, the third category I have is tips to save on tickets. So I would recommend that you look into a website called Undercover Tourist. They sell discounted tickets, and they're a reputable site that's not going to scam you out of money, and it's possible that you could save a significant amount of money on your tickets. Also, consider skipping park hopper. So park hopper, you can add to your tickets to be able to hop to a different park in the middle of the day. However, there is plenty at each park to fill your day fully, and so it can save a significant amount of money to not do park hopper tickets. You could also consider doing a rest or a resort day to save on needing a park ticket for that day. So what we like to do is maybe do Disney Springs in the morning, swim, do resort activities. You don't have to pay for a park ticket and you can still have a lot of fun. It's a nice break and you save that like $100 per person for that day. Another tip is to bring kids before their third birthday when they're still free or before they turn 10 when the price ticket would increase to adult pricing. That can save you some money too. Okay, a fourth category is tips to save on merch. We like to do things like buy glow sticks at the Dollar Tree or bubble refills for the bubble wands at Dollar Tree as well. Those things are something that your kid is going to want when you're there. And if you already have that and you've paid only a dollar for it at Dollar Tree versus who knows how much Disney charges, that can save you money. Another thing that we have done in the past is buy gift cards with discounts ahead of time. So Sam's will run discounts on Disney gift cards, and sometimes they're significant, like 10%. Target has 5% off of gift cards if you have a Target red card. And so you can save 5 to 10% on Disney gift cards and then use those gift cards to either pay off your balance for your trip or pay for food or merchandise um, at any Disney location. You can also buy autograph books ahead of time. If you wait and you buy it in a Disney gift shop, it's going to be a lot more expensive. So we like to go ahead and bring an autograph book with us. And you can even bring the same one time and time again for trips, and that can save money. We also like to set a limit on merch for our children. So you can either set a dollar amount ahead of time. You can give them a gift card. I've heard some people doing, but we usually just tell each kid that they get to pick one souvenir for the whole trip. And that just kind of keeps things in check so that you don't go overboard on spending on merch. And the last category I'll talk about is how to save money in the parks. So you can bring your own stroller if you have room in your car or if you're flying and would need a stroller in the airport anyway. It's a significant cost savings to bring your own stroller instead of renting one. You can also pre-order your magic bands at a discount. These can be up to like $10 off per person if you pre-order and have them either shipped to your house or available at your resort when you check in. Also, if you want Memory Maker, which I highly recommend, by the way, buy it in advance. You can save about $30 if you buy it in advance versus paying for it closer to your trip or after the fact. And then in our experience, Genie Plus isn't as necessary for some of the parks. I think that you can buy Genie Plus for Magic Kingdom days and Hollywood Studios days, but it's not as necessary for Animal Kingdom days and Epcot days. 
And so at $15 a person, that can save you some significant amount of money too if you just limit the days that you buy Genie Plus. And for the rides that are the individual Lightning Lane rides that you pay even more for, try to rope drop those. Get those out of the way early when crowds are low, especially if you have early entry, and then you don't have to pay that extra fee for them. Oh, those are some good tips. And those, some of those provide big savings, and some are smaller, but every little bit helps, right? We hope you found these tips helpful. And again, please like and subscribe. There will be more tips and more what-if videos coming soon. Thank you.